blue dot in a red state trying to talk some sense always shoots it straight he don't straddle no fence a common man with a real plan he's a friend to you and me a long shot from the lone star he's the voice that we need better vote like there's no tomorrow cause friend our future's on the line we can't stay silent and we can't back down we can't sit this one out this time if you want a man who'll take a stand talk straight and walk tall it's time to ride or die and get behind old texas paul Hey folks, it's so Texas Paul. Hope your coffee's as good as mine. Mm. I am your host, Texas Paul, and let's dive into it. We've got a lot to cover today. Our first uh, subject today is Mississippi's water crisis. And I'd like to shout out to uh, Mississippi today, and particularly Molly Minta for sharing this image for us of actual Jackson, Mississippi water. Uh, Mississippi just recently suffered from a pretty serious flood. What actually they lucked out in a pretty serious flood. Uh, all, all through the South, there was an extreme amount of rain. The Mississippi River and the Pearl River. Uh, rose uh, and stopped just just short, uh, literally inches short of reaching the point that the flood damage would have been ex just exceedingly devastating. And for the most part, the city of Jackson emerged unscathed. Central Louisiana, you know, did suffer some flooding, but the damage was relatively mild for the uh, for the amount of rain that they got and the typical amount of damage that Mississippi sees in, in one of these floods. I mean, they were exceedingly lucky. But as you can see, Jackson, Mississippi's water plants went offline. And what we're hearing is Republicans desperately, desperately trying to blame this on the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, Chakwe Lumumba and Democrats in general. They don't want to end up in the same situation that Greg Abbott is here in uh, Texas. They, you know, they're facing the same kind of infrastructure crisis, and they want to put all the blame on the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. And yes, the city usually does run your water treatment plants. And if there were no response or it was a typical situation, the blame she would fall squarely on Chakwe Lumumba. But that's not the case this time. It's, it's just not the case. Let me explain. Back in 1964, old uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. And after the Civil Rights Act was signed, uh, schools became integrated. And when that happened, in many cities across the South, you had what was known as white flight. Jackson, Mississippi lost almost all of its white population. It is now an 80% African-American city. It's 80% black. And in the state of Mississippi, that means you're not going to get much help from the state. See, Jackson didn't shrink in size. It still covers the same square footage it always did. But its tax base has shrunk considerably. And for decades, all through the 70s and the 80s, more and more people left the city. And the tax base shrank more and more as businesses and, and white people fled to other parts of Mississippi like Gulfport and Biloxi, which seemed to have no problem whatsoever getting aid from the uh, governor and state uh, in any kind of situation that they're in. 
But Jackson has been crying uh, with mayor after mayor after mayor pleading with the state for help. See, when this happens to cities, they, they enter a, a, it's a trap. It's a, it's a death spiral. Infrastructure costs don't go down when you have people leave a city. Because infrastructure is not based on per capita. It's based on square miles. If a lot of people move out of a, a, a uh, suburb, you still have to provide services to that suburb. There are still people there. You still have all those infrastructure costs. And that's what Jackson is facing and has been facing for decades. And they've had to make hard decisions and cutbacks. And what they did was what every city does in this situation is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that only lasts so long. For instance, here in, Ode here in Texas, uh, in the middle of the summer, 100 plus degree heat, Odessa had a water main. Odessa, Texas had a water main that should have been replaced a decade ago. It was well beyond its serviceable years, and it blew out. And the people of Odessa, Texas, went two days in over 100-degree heat uh, with no warning and no water for two solid days. Jackson, Mississippi is in much worse shape. Their main water plant, O.B. Curtis, has been in need of co a complete retrofit for years. Uh, they had four boil water notices in just the last few months. Um, and again, mayor after mayor after mayor has pled with the state government for help to no avail. I mean, they just asked for $42 million uh, last in the last fiscal budget to fix these very problems which would have just scratched the surface because both the main plant, O.B. Curtis, and the backup plant need to be retrofitted from the ground up. And to make it worse, you have the right-wingers that are just... I, I, I don't understand. I, I, because I'm not, they, I'm not that way, I don't understand. I am a Democrat. We are the Am I My Brother's Keeper party. We look out for one another. And, and all over social media, you just keep hearing the same thing. This, oh, the reason this happened is because it was a Democratic city. Uh, the reason this happened, you know, is, is because uh, Democrats just don't know how to run anything. And they don't ever, you know, it's a load of crap. It's a load of crap. Republican and Democratic run cities are some of the best run cities in the country. And... This has nothing to do. It, it, you could have had Jesus Christ himself as mayor of that city. And they would still be in a mess because the infra infrastructure has just not been maintained. They haven't had the taxes to do it, and they've got no help from a state government. And, and you have to keep in mind, people, this is an 80% African-American city. It's 80% black city. And Mississippi has a racism problem. They integrated their last school by order of a judge in 2016. 2016. That's how long racism has just been the order of the day in Mississippi. So, we've got a city in a death spiral. It keeps losing its its tax base, but it doesn't lose its infrastructure costs. In fact, it keeps going up and up and up. So they've been not fixing wasn't what wasn't broken. That doesn't mean it's not going to break. They've had sewage lines break and flood out into the streets. They've had several uh, instances, instances of the uh, water plant shutting down. Uh, due to defective screens in this last flood, and you can imagine what water looks like in a flood. It's full of trees and debris, clogged up all the screens, burn out the motors. Um, the pumps failed. The National Guard came in. I actually had one right winger tell me that the National Guard came in and uh, 
Chakwi Lumumba had said it would cost a billion dollars to to rebuild all of the failing uh, water infrastructure in Jackson, which includes re, you know replacing mains and water pipes, and et cetera. Um, but no, when they got there, this 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 person actually believed that the National Guard showed up to the OB Curtis water plant and just turned the switches on and it was fine. It was fine. Lumumba was a liar. There was nothing wrong. No, what happened was the National Guard showed up. They installed a backup temporary pump, which failed almost immediately. They've been working on this problem for weeks now, and they finally restored water pressure to the city a few days back. The problem was that, you know, water levels fall in the towers to the point that there's no water pressure. So, you know, you get water that looks like this. It's just filthy, nasty disgusting water and what do we do about it what do we do about it well it's time for the grown-ups to govern it's time to kick republicans out of statewide every state's statewide offices every federal office in a state every senator and house member why we just had the biden infrastructure bill the senators from Mississippi could have easily, easily come to Democrats and said, hey, we have a huge infrastructure problem. Something as basic as water for our people. And we need help. And they would have put it in the bill. But instead, Republicans, you know, you did the usual bullshit saying it was just an inflated pork filled bill and fought the bill and voted. You know, one of the senators in Mississippi voted against it. Um, one of the senators voted for it to his credit. Um, but it's just, it's the same old bullshit out of Republicans playing games instead of taking care of your people. That's what's supposed to happen when a city ha has this problem. For instance, in Detroit, they needed help. Flint needed help, but we had an ignorant Republican that was governor at the time and destroyed their water system and I, because he was just so inept and stupid. The state is supposed to step in and help when a city finds itself in this situation because the city can't pull itself out of it unless they can fix this infrastructure because you can't entice new business. You can't and build a, a new tax base, entice people to your city when your infrastructure is a mess. People will not come. First things first, people, the grown-ups have to get to work. And we only do that by kicking them, uh, Republicans out of office and voting Democrats in, period. We're the only party that'll do it. We're the only party that will step up and say, hey, when there are infrastructure needs, let's fix them. Let's be a first world nation, not a third world nation, and have our water look like that. People like Greg Abbott, the governor of Mississippi, the governor of Georgia, the governor of Florida, they all need to go. They all play nothing but these stupid ass games instead of taking care of business and governing, period. On to the next issue. As we are talking about Republicans not governing and utilizing culture war issues, what's at the forefront these days is the transgender issue. And it's led to just tons of transgender abuse at the hands of Republicans. In my state, Greg Abbott passed a law that if you have a transgender child and you're getting them health care, and I'll explain this in just a moment, if you're getting them health care, he calls that child abuse because he's so ignorant on the subject. It's like Roe. They're completely ignorant on this, the, the, the subject of abortion, yet they make laws. You know, it's, it, it, they make laws telling women what they can and cannot do with their bodies. 
It's the same thing in the, with the transgender people. They don't even understand what it means to be transgender. We'll get into it right after this. Folks, today's show is brought to you by Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. I am telling you, this is the richest, the most flavorful, flavorful coffee you can get. It, to me, it's every bit as good as Kopi Luwak, which I will not drink since I found out that it's eaten and pooped out by a civet, a cat, <laughs> which is disgusting. Jamaican Blue, Blue Mountain Coffee, to me, is every bit as good. It's far less expensive. It's available at any of your f uh, favorite um, online vendors. Just make sure it's actual Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. If it doesn't say from the Jamaican Blue Mountains, it is not Blue Mountain Coffee. Believe me, folks, you'll appreciate it. If I hadn't had a couple cups, we wouldn't be here right now. So back to the transgender issue. Let me explain what it means to be transgender, since so many Republicans just don't understand the basics of it. In the portion of your brain, it's in the very center. It's, it's underneath the cerebrum. When you think of a brain, you think about the wrinkly part of the organ is what most people think of. At the very heart of your brain, there is a hypothalamus, a section of the brain, a little bulbous area called a hypothalamus. And above that, separating it from the cerebrum, is a, a, what's called the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis. Well, the center, center portion of the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis and the hypothalamus determine your sexuality. It's not determined by your genitalia. That's where Republicans seem to be having a problem with this, is they do not understand any more than your hands, your hands do not determine whether you are right or left-handed. That is a function of your mind. It is how your mind is wired. Your sexuality what makes you attracted to either men or women happens in the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis and the hypothalamus. How you see yourself, how the smell of the opposite sex makes you react is all governed in, in this area. What you see yourself as how you feel, it's all governed by this portion of your brain. And there are significant differences in the brains of men and women. There are also differences in the brains of, of transgender people. Um, and there's differences in the brains of transgender men and women that were, we didn't expect to see. For instance, you think of the, the brain, you think of that gray matter in the cerebrum. Well, underneath the gray matter is a layer of what they call white matter. And the density and thickness, so what makes it white is myelin. It's, think of myelin, it's, it's a sheath that covers neurons. And then think of it as the insulation on a wire. When you see a colored wire, that's what myelin is. But it's always white. And it's called the white matter of the brain. Um, what they found out that in males that are that identify as transgender, that when they're, when they're young, they know. And believe me, they know. They know. You need to think about that for a moment. They know at an early age that something's not right. They know that they're attracted to other people of their same sex. They know that they don't feel right within their own body. They don't smell right. They don't produce the right hormones. They don't feel right. And we know for a fact that it is a physical condition. It is not a mental condition like, like Republicans believe it is. It is not. It is a physical condition. The brain of a transgender male is very similar to a cisgendered female. 
straight female. In the white matter, the, the bed nucleus of the stria uh, terminalis, the hypothalamus, and, and several other portions of the brain, it more resembles a female. What's interesting is that when you have a female that's born, it gets more complicated. This born transgender, it gets more complicated. They, they had very surprising results. Their brain is still is different, but it wasn't different in how we expected. We expected that their brain to mimic more of a male, and actually it's kind of hyper male. It, it, the thickness of, of the, the white matter and, 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 and other, other things, the density of the white matter was beyond what a normal you know, cisgender male's brain would be. I mean, this, so this is something that we can look at medically and know exists and we can help them. And, what, you know, the, this isn't the 60s and 70s when we first started figuring this out. We actually know that when a child is truly transgender, we can identify it. And we can help them with hormone therapy. We can help them feel normal until they mature. And and, and the just the BS you get out of right wingers about um, surgeries and stuff like that—that's not happening to children. That is not happening to children. You can't transition until you're fully formed, a fully formed adult. And it's just, it, I hate how much they hate and lie and spread misinformation. It's just disgusting. It's how they're either intensely ignorant or they just lie all the time and sometimes both. But young children that are transgendered and, and, and folks, we're not talking about a lot of people here. I've represented, there's 320 million people in this country. There's a dot on this piece of paper. It represents transgender people. Can you see the dot on the paper? And I'm not talking about the holes on the bottom here. I'm talking about there's a dot I wrote on it. You can't even see it because in a population that large, the actual number of transgender people is very small. It's very small. And these young people can be helped with hormone therapies. It drastically reduces the amount of suicide in transgender children, drastically, because it helps them feel more normal. Try to imagine waking up tomorrow in the wrong body. If you're a man or a woman, if you're a woman, imagine waking up tomorrow with 50 pounds more muscle on your frame. Imagine waking up with the wrong smell. You're producing testosterone. You're not producing the right hormones. You, you smell wrong. Your hair's too coarse. You have whiskers. Imagine that, being trapped in that body. Well, that's what transgender people live with. And we can help them. We can help them have happy, normal lives. As normal as can be. Well, we just have to stop hating and playing culture war games. Allow young people to get medical treatment because that's what, what hormone therapy for young transgender people is. It's, med it's medical treatment. Stop being hateful. Move, moving on because we, we've got a lot to cover today. Um, unfortunately, uh, polio's back. New York has had to declare a state of emergency. I just want to say thank you, anti-vaxxers, uh, for helping bring polio back. Well, they had a case in Rockland County that was confirmed to be polio. Uh, the man has, has, has become paralyzed. That's what polio does to people. It either causes paralysis or it causes uh, meningitis type symptoms. Um, it is a horrible, painful, debilitating, awful disease. And it is now showing up in the wastewater. Uh, they started testing the wastewater as an emergency uh, step when they found out that someone actually had an active case of polio. And it is not only in the city of New York's wastewater. Imagine how many people have to be infected for them to find Polio in the wastewater. 
I mean, in the samples. I mean, think about that. Think about how many people have to be already infected. And four additional counties of Rockland, Orange, Sullivan, and Nassau counties of New York have all had polio tests positive in their wastewater. So there are active cases around New York and New York City because it is a transit city where people come in and out of the country. And it has jumped to us and too many people are unvaccinated. So they declared a state of emergency, which allows um, it allows EMTs, it allows uh, midwives, it allows uh, um, um pharmacists it allows them to to actually give vaccines and they're trying to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible i would like you to take a close look at the image on your screen those are iron lungs when you become paralyzed from polio eventually it reaches your diaphragm which allows you to breathe and you suffocate they have to put you inside one of these devices still to this day Create negative air pressure around your body to allow air to flow into your lungs so that you can breathe, so that this thing can help you breathe or breathe for you. It is an awful disease, and I am so pissed off at you anti-vaxxers for bringing this back. What's next? Measles? Thanks, folks. Appreciate you. We also have a, a uh, serious serious issue developing on the financial front. This is bad, folks, and you need to prepare for it. China has gone back into COVID lockdown. There's a new strain of uh, COVID running around China and the cities of Guiyang and Chengdu and 33, uh, 31 others have shut down. 65 million people are under stay-at-home orders in China right now. Um, Tech companies are already putting out warnings that this is going to, going to create supply issues, that this is going to cause financial crises. And that is on top of the bad news that we have already had coming out of New Zealand, Canada, and Australia about the housing market. They are seeing housing prices plummeting. The bubbles have burst in those countries. They're, most analysts are, suspect, um, are predicting that we will not see the kind of, of burst that they've had. And like, say, New Zealand has been hit particularly bad. They've seen home prices fall 21% so far. Um, it's just, it's... Horrific, folks, and it's going to be a shock to the financial system. We are, they say, we are going to see cooling and pullback in some markets, but not nationwide here. Um, there's still enough demand for housing that it is not going to be that kind of crisis here. I would like to thank you for tuning in. I've enjoyed it. If you can support me, head to texaspaulmerch.com. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I can't tell you how much I enjoy this and I'm looking forward to next week. Um, Y'all have a wonderful day. This is Old Texas Paul signing off. Love you folks. Take care. He don't straddle no fence A common man with a real plan He's a friend to you and me A long shot from the Lone Star He's the voice that we need Better vote like there's no tomorrow Cause friend, our future's on the line We can't stay silent and we can't back down We can't sit this one out this time if you want a man who'll take a stand, talk straight and walk tall, it's time to ride or die and get behind old Texas Paul.